University really is the time in your life where you can focus on building a solid foundation and with some strategic moves alongside your studies, you can position yourself so that you're highly skilled in the areas that truly matter and are able to walk straight into a job the moment you graduate. However, for 99% of people, they'll remember less than half of what they've been taught, they'll spend months looking for a job after they graduate, and after a while, they'll find themselves asking where did it all go wrong. Although you don't have to be like the rest, because even if you implement just three of the six tips I share with you in this video, you'll be better off than 80% of your peers. And these tips are not the same tips that you see in other videos that recommend a dozen different study techniques. No, these are the tips that I personally used to land multiple internships while I was a student, land a graduate job 8 months before finishing uni, and also graduate with first class honours and the university medal for academic achievement. And these tips are not for everyone, but that's exactly the point. Alright, now the first tip I have for you is to make a proper portfolio and resume. As a student with zero connections, no real world experience, and being just one application among hundreds of others, your resume and portfolio has to be special. It has to differentiate you from everyone else. An application that looks like every other one will get treated like majority of job applications. It will get tossed to the side and never even read. For people who fall victim to this, this means time and time again they're going to miss out on opportunities and eventually fall behind. Although the truth is, in just a couple of hours and with the right guidance, you can turn a crappy resume into a job landing machine. I personally have gone through many iterations of resumes over the years and through all these repetitions I've really narrowed down what works and it's a lot simpler than you might think. And I'm not special, the resume making process that I use doesn't only work for me, it can work for you too and I'm certain of it. Since revealing my process, I've received many personal thank you and appreciation messages from job getting students and working engineers, so no matter where you are in your journey, I'm certain that you can apply the same process. Now I won't be going through the process that I use to make my resume and portfolio in this video because I've done it in detail in other videos on my channel, but at the end of this one I will link you to those videos so you can watch it after this one. Alright, now my next tip follows on from my first one and it's to get an internship early. Up until a certain point, there's only so much that you can get out of a textbook, a professor, or even studying. And once you reach that point, you really need to stop watching and get in the game. In my opinion, the perfect time for this is at the end of second year. From my experience, by that point, you've covered a lot of the fundamental stuff and won't need to be guided through the base assumed knowledge, and with continued study and mentorship while you intern, you're actually able to become an asset rather than just being a hindrance. Personally, I've seen quite a few students who managed to get an internship before this two year mark, and in every case, all they end up doing is tasks that are extremely tedious and that no one else wants to do. And realistically, this is through no fault of anyone at any of these companies because it's just unreasonable to expect someone who's trying to do their job to spend hours and hours teaching the basics when at university there's someone who's paid to teach this stuff and it literally takes months and years to get through. On the other hand though, don't let things go too far the other way and wait for your first time to get some real world experience to be at your first graduate job. Those couple of years that you can spend as an intern can make an astronomical difference to your ability. The learning curve during your first couple of years of working is highly exponential and the difference between a graduate who's been working for two to three years before graduation and someone who's never stepped foot in the industry is literally night and day. Now I know in rare cases, even with every effort, some people still aren't able to get internships and in these rare rare cases, this is where tip number 3 will allow you to keep up with those who did get an internship. And those of you that are able to get an internship, this is where you're able to double up and get even further ahead. Alright, and tip number 3 is do personal projects. And for clarity, personal projects are projects that you do in your own time purely for skill development. These projects are outside of the ones you need to be doing to pass your university courses and are ones that simulate real tasks that you would be doing once you start working. For example, in structural engineering, a personal project could be something like sketching up an imaginary steel frame building and then going through the full design process of working out loads, modeling and analyzing your results and then creating a set of construction drawings. Or even on a much smaller scale, you could pick a single element to design like a reinforcement 
reinforced concrete retaining wall or a steel truss. The options for what you could do a personal project on are literally limitless, so it's completely up to you what you want to choose and how far you want to take things. If you do need some inspiration for what to do your personal project on, and this literally applies to any field of engineering, what you can do is jump on LinkedIn and search up jobs that you would one day want to apply for and then read the job description and look for the skills and tasks they want someone in that role to have or be able to do and then pick something that covers one of these skills or tasks. Regardless of what sort of project you choose, make sure you produce something that you're proud of because this is something that you can show off on your resume, obviously in your portfolio, but also in job interviews. Okay, and number four is build software knowledge. These days, there's no two ways about it. If you're not learning how to use new programs and improving on the ones you already know how to use, you're putting yourself at a huge disadvantage. All engineers in one way or another are dependent on the technology and the programs that they use. At the most basic level, this is things like Microsoft Outlook and Teams, and at the highest level, this is things like programs that can handle 3D finite element analysis, and also knowing how to create these sort of applications through coding and programming. Now, depending on what type of engineering that you're doing, there are different levels of competency that you'll need to have with this sort of thing, but for majority of engineering majors, just being able to confidently use these types of programs is enough. Now, as a student, the best way that I found to consistently build up my software knowledge was to normalize the use of these programs during my study sessions. For me, that meant that whenever I had the opportunity to jump into a software program and check the answers to one of my hand calculations or even an assignment question, I always made the effort to do so. Most of the time, if you are solving an engineering problem by hand, the complexity of the problem that you're solving is relatively low compared to what a full design program is capable of handling, so the modeling time for such a program is also quite small too. With this being said, Said, obviously this extra effort will drag out the overall duration of your study sessions, but the payoff in terms of maintaining your skills and growing in this area is well worth it in my opinion. Okay, and next is craft your collection. What I mean by this is that creating a library filled with things like notes, design guides, textbooks, example calculations, summary sheets, and even spreadsheets is key to building and also sustaining your knowledge. As a student, one of the ways that I began creating my own collection was by repeating each one of the tutorial questions after class. In this repeat, I would completely break down each step of the process and I would also copy and paste any relevant parts of the lecture or textbook next to the question so that I had everything relevant right next door. By doing this, I was trying to make the process of solving each type of question completely foolproof and not only did this help with my understanding at the time, but but when it came to revising this type of content, this trick worked really well. Besides this, I also used to make a lot of flowcharts for different structural design procedures, and a lot of this stuff I actually still use today. One thing I wish I'd done sooner, and something I've probably done now, but I suggest that you guys do it now while you're a student, is properly condense your notes and make a resource that can stand apart from all your other notes. Recently I did this for some of my reinforced concrete design notes and combined it with some of the learnings that I've had over the last two years working as a structural engineer, but this is really a resource I wish I made while I was a student, while it was all fresh, because it would have really helped a lot with studying, but also to just reference when I started working. Also, for anyone interested in this guide, I'll leave a link to it in the description in case you want to check it out. Alright, and number six is under Understand, don't memorize. As an engineer, a big part of your role is coming up with solutions to unique problems, and the keyword here is unique. This means that each problem is going to be different and you can't just regurgitate the same solution you used last time. As a student, because of the way we get examined, it's really easy to become a regurgitator. At university, in the lecture you get taught a concept, in the tutorial you work through an example problem, for homework you work through the same sort of example problems with slightly different numbers, and then when the exam comes up, you get the same sort of question with slightly different numbers again. Outside of university, things aren't so straightforward. You won't have all the information, you'll have to make a bunch of assumptions, and you'll also have to innovate and tweak things to make it work. If you don't understand the theory and have a good grasp on the concepts that govern what you need to design, very quickly you're going to have to backtrack and get up to speed on things. As a student, your main job is to literally learn things, so this is one of the most convenient times in your life to get stuck into the theory and really understand things. So make sure you aren't just repeating questions and memorizing things for your exams, but you're also educating yourself with the knowledge that you'll really need 
need after you graduate. Anyways, I hope that you learned something from this video and if you did enjoy it, you might like to follow through and start learning about how to level up your resume and portfolio, so you should check out this video here where I explain how I made my resume or that video there where I explain how I made my portfolio. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Thank you.